Testing of the bike, ready for Beagle Bash. Okay, getting loaded up for the 40th annual Beagle Bash. This race has been going on since I was six years old. Well before my time, I was riding mini bikes up at my cottage and around Mosport when these guys started this race up. And uh, this is one of those legacy events that you get to ride once a year. It's held mostly, the test sections are held mostly on uh, private property. Actually, all on private property. Yeah, all on private property with the farms around um, southwestern Ontario. It's hosted out of Gopher Dunes. Gopher Dunes is kind enough to uh, use their property as a staging area for the Enduro. So that's where we all leave from on a special part of, of Gopher Dunes. And um, I am running line 26 tomorrow. Now the thing about go, um, the Beagle Bash, it's the first race of the season. So everyone's super pumped to do it, but most people, you know, haven't really been thinking about racing much, getting into it. A lot of people complain about being out of shape and not being used to their bike yet. It's also almost always cold and miserable. And those key hallmarks of rain and freezing is going to be tomorrow as well. So it's going to be a really typical Beagle Bash. Last year, a bunch of people had to quit and I think a couple even got hypothermia. Um, so yeah, it's 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 kind of its own hard enduro of sorts. It's going to be a good time. I'm picking up Dave tomorrow really early. My buddy Dave, we're going to pick him up at about 5:30 in the morning, and uh, load him up here in the Big Iron Moto trailer. Setup wise, I've went with uh, some harder tires. Um, Metzler Six Days Extreme DOT tire, very hard. I've got running tubes, so I've got about 12, 13 psi in the back, about the same in the front. This is a race that's very fast and very flat and for tomorrow, very, 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 very muddy. Uh, we're expecting like 25, 30, 40, 100 millimeters of rain. I don't know, but it's gonna be wet and miserable and cold. Uh, you just gotta prepare for that. I don't know exactly what I'm gonna throw on to try and keep warm at this point, but I'll probably throw on a vest and um, some, some under layers to just make sure that when I do get wet, cause that's unavoidable, at least I can try and stay warm through layering. Um, last year was actually my first year running in the vet expert class in this race because it was the first race of the year and I did I did pretty well I got uh, f I think I want to say like fifth or something like that um, in the class and at the time I was really happy with that because it was my first time racing in vet X and um, but now that I've looked at the results and kind of went through the whole season um, I feel like I can do a lot better and and one thing in particular that uh, I think caused me a big problem last year as I decided to ride in line one and it was exact same conditions very cold miserable and for the first two tests it was such a trailblazing that I lost minutes that I'm I'm pretty confident that I wouldn't have done if I had started at a later line so this time I went the other extreme and I'm actually starting all the way back at line 24 and just coincidentally I'm actually running in the same line as the, the pro who won it last year Josh Long and if I can just pace him for as long as I can I think that'll be a good way to figure out where I sit and um, the paces I can try and maintain because if I'm keeping up with that guy then I'm going to be doing very well in my class because he won overall last year. Um, as far as what I'm going to wear for um, equipment, um, just my armor, everything like that, and I'm going to bring this waist pack and I'm going to bring this 3 liter USWI pack and ride with those. So some water in here and lots of gloves in here and I'm probably going to bring like three or four pair, almost a, a fresh pair for every test section. They're light, easy to throw on, nothing feels better than putting on some dry gloves. and. Um, 
Beyond that, I mean, maybe maybe a fresh pair of goggles, but I'll probably leave that at the gas stop. There's two gas stops. Five o'clock in the morning. Why do we do this? A podcast, this one here. Uh, Gypsy Tales with Skylar Howe. And uh, I really like, like these podcasts, uh, the Gypsy Tale ones. And what I've noticed with all the dirt bikers that he has on, all world-class riders, uh, people like Skylar Howe, you know, uh, Cooper Webb, um, who else he had on? Um, anyway, all the all the top guys. I mean, you go through the long list. There's hundreds of episodes. But one trend I've noticed that's really interesting with dirt bikers that I think is really misunderstood with people trying to get into the scene is how difficult it was for all of these top people, despite their abilities, despite their dedication, to actually get into the scene to become a factory rider or a sponsored rider. And I think the, the misunderstanding that a lot of people have, almost, uh, I don't know if there's another sport that's like it. Maybe it's almost like a hockey mentality where if you just become the best player out on the ice and score all the goals and keep working your way up through just being amazing, you're eventually going to make all this money, get signed, everything like that. But that's not the case in dirt biking. and. What's quite clear is that there are phenomenal riders out there who go for very long periods of their life um, before they ultimately catch a break. And I say it because it's not an inevitability. You see these guys who've been trying for decades sometimes, trying to break through to become that rider. Like um, Skyler's just talking right now about how hard he had to work and how much money and risk he had to take and you know eventually it comes through and I, I think fundamentally what's at the bottom of all these stories is it, it comes down to your grit and determination uh, to not give up and just become to, to know that you will become that rider one day and never give up um, and secondly to just work hard as hard as F to just become talented and and it's almost like you're going to have to be a very exceptional, talented rider for a long period of time uh, before that door of opportunity comes open. And it's often in ways that you would not expect. It's not just because you win a big race or something like that. But um, So I guess patience, determination is key. Um, but uh, don't, don't go about this sport if your goal is to become a factory rider think if I just win all the time that's going to happen. There's a lot more to it and I think now with social media in particular that's a major thing that a lot of manufacturers are looking at because they're you know their athletes are marketing and, and marketing is business and so if you can't present yourself in a way that there's a good investment for them I think you're kind of losing um, a possible opportunity there so Anyway, just rambling. It's a good podcast. Highly recommend it. Gives you some really good insights on not just Skyler's life and Dakar and Baja and all these amazing races, but also what it took for him to get there. Check this out. Dave's ready to go. He's all there. So I get to Dave's and then I realize that I forgot the keys to the trailer. And already it was kind of like, oh, we'll get there. We got a bit of time to get ready. Now we're we're basically already started the enduro down to the minute. We're almost houring out before we get there. So I'm running back to my house, grabbing the keys back to Dave's, <laughs> and then and then hopefully we get there on time. We got like no time to spare. So test one has started. Live laps for points now. Here with Dave on our way off to Gopher Dunes. <laughs> Let's do this. It's a, an hour and 40 minutes right now on 407, so we're doing a hard enduro Uber X all the way to Beagle Bash. <laughs>
it. Holy smokes. Right down to the wire here. I'm just trying to get all my GoPro stuff together. Normally they do a bit more uh, lead up and sort of short fun clips, but uh, it's just so frantic trying to get pickup day. <laughs> I'm gonna go back to my house, get everything we need. And, but it looks like we're ready to go. I'm ready to race and everyone's here. We're at the Beagle Bash. First race, right? First okay. race on the bike? Yeah, oh yeah. Oh yeah. She is. <laughs> 4D. Woo. Nice. Look who I'm with, the president of Off-Road Ontario. Where are we, Jerry? What are we doing today? It's Beagle Bash time. Oh, let's uh, tell us about the Beagle Bash. It is the first race, first enduro of the year. Uh, in memorial of Doug Kent, who's been helping organize and host this event for many, many years. Uh, and yeah, looking forward to it. It's typical Beagle Bash weather. We've got some rain, <laughs> kind of cool, uh, ready to get soaked and muddy. Perfect way to start a season. Absolutely. All right, man. Well, madness is already set in here. Just <laughs> testing my tire and I realized it's flat. So. This is a stock tube. It's not great. I love stock. Can you grab me my compressor? Yeah. Yeah, that's okay. This is a good one. Come on, don't fail me now. Well, I'm filthy and basically feel like I've already done two tests at the Beagle Bash, so I guess I'm warmed up. Finally ready to go. No keys, no flat tire. Holy smokes. I think uh, the Enduro gods are sending me a message like sit this one out, Robichaux. Take a hint, buddy. There he is, KTM brother now. Yeah, man. All right, let's do I this. I got on the wrong bike before. <laughs> yeah, buddy. Here he is, Jamie, debuting in the vet expert category. You got bumped. <laughs> you got bumped. You're too fast. <laughs> Good luck. Yeah. How you doing? Good. How's it going? Good luck. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Beautiful day. Yeah. Good luck, man. Woo. Good luck, Ryan. Yeah, my first in Hero. This is it. This is the KTM. Here we go. This is the winning bike, I'm telling you, man. Well, usually they, because some of them are X Pro yeah. and Fed Expert, yeah. I think they're 50 bucks. A little different than North Carolina, isn't it? A little bit North Carolina. <laughs> a little bit wet. It's got the same watching. ring. It's, it's probably just as wet. <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah. But I'm here this time. At least 15 people. No, I can't. I hope that's good. It's hard to tell, but that's two. I'm feeling good about it. Kind of one it was good. Like, I'd say like eight out of ten. That one, I think I rode that nine out of ten. And I'm feeling good. I, I should check my standings to see where I am. But man, this is a nice trail. This is just beautiful. A little bit slippery, but way different than last year. Much, much nicer. Really well cut. Really enjoying this one. Had a, had a different impression coming in here today. I thought that it would be a lot muddier and kind of hellish, but I'm actually loving this flow. It's just fast and, and great obstacles that sneak up on you and nice burn. This transit is a good example of that, but without all the uh, brush cut. But it's beautiful. Look at this trail. You never get to ride this sort of stuff, so if you want to ride these trails, you can sign up for a race. With this particular one, they actually have uh, 
they have a dual sport ride as well, so you can do it even without racing. And this is the only time you're going to be able to ride these rides. So come on out, get this, uh, get your bike out here, and give the people back a try. No mistakes, no crashes. I'm feeling pretty good about this race so far, and that's uh, nice because it certainly didn't start off the right way. And I didn't feel good about this coming today. I thought it would be really muddy and really slippery, but. The amount of rain that's come here right now is just a perfect amount of traction. It's a little bit slippery in parts, but overall it's just hero, hero, hero dirt. And it's great. I love it. This is a great ride. The thing is, you never get to ride this in rain. It's not on the OSDR trails. It's all private property, so if you ever want to get out here and do some riding, this is the way to do it, is get out and do either the race or the, uh, the Beagle Bash dual ride and you will not regret it. It's really cool. I'm wet, but I'm having a good time. This is awesome. It's springtime in Ontario, and it feels great to be back on the bike. Wow. How's it going, Vanessa? Good. Yeah? I took a header to a tree. But Come on. That... All right, thankfully I've got a spare pair of gloves here. Do I have two? No, just one. So, switch these up. Around minute 12, I'm 24. So I'm sitting pretty good right now. Oh, fresh gloves. The small things in life, eh? For the last two sections, like wait for me, wait for oh, me. Oh man, that section. 
Awesome. Was, oh my god, that was that awesome. Was, the one before was way too muddy. Oh my god. My hips hurt. There he is. He went by me like Woo! Hey, oh, is that me? Little... You? Yeah. Daryl, uh, where, where did you go after the mud section? Oh man, this is fun. Yeah, that was Woo! good. That, that was, was a good, good one. Man, the things, I couldn't believe my day today. Yeah. Forgot my keys to my trailer, okay. then I get here and the tire's blown. Oh, shit. Just like comedy bears, okay, all right? Is that <laughs> <laughs> That went in my, my head a lot differently. <laughs> <laughs> I was in first usually. Yeah. 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 At the beginning there because the OPP showed up in second gas. No, did they? Yeah. Jonathan Manella. That's my buddy. Thank you, good ride. Second place, Logan Densmore. Thank you very much.